Okay, what I want to continue with is actually a better way for doing edge detection. So the Laplace operator right now was just kind of the most or very simplistic form of doing edge detection. And now we can actually check, can we do that actually better? So how do we detect, can we detect edges? So what, the first the question should be, why are we actually interested in obtaining edges? So for, for different operations, especially if I want to interp interpret my image, um, I often reduce my image to certain types of features, or I want to look into certain type of features, or in German, Merkmale. And one of those examples for those features could, for example, be edges, or I may be interested in corners, um, or any other type of features. So during this course, and the Photogrammetry 2 course, we will see different types of features. So there are features which have a certain extent, like line features, or blobs, which are just kind of large areas I may be interested in. But we also look into point features or things like, for example, corners. So determining the location of a corner um, can help me depending on the analysis task that I want to do. So for example, if I have this input image of, of a house structure made of wood, um, if we extract those images, of course we have some kind of smaller edges which are at least not visible here on the projector. But we can see that we can actually extract this structure here at least roughly. Or there may be point interest points, you can see a couple of dots spread over this image, which, as we will see later on, are also very important, um, those point operators for doing 3D reconstruction tasks. We need to find distinct points, we need to find the same distinct points in, the second Im in a second image, and then based on this information of corresponding points, we can actually perform a 3D reconstruction. For now, we will just look into edges, so the main task of the, the remaining part now is how to go from here to here. Okay? So the task is clear. Input it, arbitrary input image, and we want to extract the edges in there. Again, there are different types of features, and although one of the important things is there's no feature which is best for everything. So typically there are features which are there for, for a certain purpose. So if I want to visually inspect an image, edges are things which may help me, or if I want to analyze, for example, the streets on, from an aerial image, something where, where detecting those edges is beneficiary or can support the task. But in general, for, for general tasks, there are a very large number of features um, you find in the community developed for detecting specific properties of an image. And there is the feature that you should select always depends on your application, so there is no best feature. There's always a reason to use one or the other feature. Um, also, one distinction between with the term feature, so in different communities, the term feature is typically used differently. So in, in image processing, it's something we, we start with, so what we're doing right now, image feature are typically elements in my image, such as a line or a corner, so a property within, I can directly extract from the image. In other tasks, like pattern recognition tasks, we'll also look into the photogrammetry course here. Um, these can be certain properties of an object, which in this example also relates to, an, to, the, to the image or the intensity values of the image, but doesn't necessarily has to be the case. Okay, but today we want to focus on edges, and in order to do edge, edge detection, we first have to define what is actually an edge. So what defines an edge? So a drastic change, already pretty good. We may not say color, we may say intensity values. So far we just dealt with intensity values. Okay, so it's a change in intensity values. Um, it's right, to some degree. So now we consider the example. So we have whatever small image. We just have one bright pixel here and all the others are dark. So it's clearly an abrupt change in intensity values to go from one pixel to a neighboring pixel, but you may not call that a line. But it's definitely one of the conditions that need to be fulfilled. So what else? So the change in intensity values, so going from bright to dark or dark to, uh, to bright. What else? So for obtaining an edge, there should be a certain extent. So there should be a change in intensity values along a smooth line. 
So we have some smooth line through my image, whatever. This is a line through my image, and let's say I have those values over here, which are bright, the others are dark. That's something we would actually call an edge. OK, so our definition is it's a step in the image from dark to bright or bright to dark along a smooth line. So it means it's not a line which is broken up into small parts. It would be one smooth line. How do we express a step? Simply using a step function. So we just, in, again, go back to 1D and we want to express a step at a location C going from the intensity value A to the intensity value B. We can express this with a step function like this. You can actually write that down in exactly this form. So this, is, this just, just gives me a sign. And so if this value is negative, it's minus 1. If this value is positive, it's plus 1. Well, this basically does it. It is an intensity function which changes its values from A to B at the location C. OK? So this is a step function. So we need to look for something like this in my image. Right? So this is still 1D. The next thing we want to have, typically this, we won't have an abrupt step function for different reasons. Um, so there's always some smoothing involved. Say, OK. So we take that, let's take that function and actually perform a smoothing. So apply a Gaussian filter so that we actually get a smooth function in here. So simply convolve some smoothing kernel can be a Gaussian filter with a certain neighborhood, but can also be a box filter or some other filter. Just a smoothing kernel. Convolve it with my function s. So this was my function s over here. So OK, it's also written here. I convolve this with s, and then I get a step function, which looks like this, more a sigmoid function. So which moves from a to b around c. So not exactly at c, so this point is this is a value at c, which typically lies between a and b. But now this is a smooth function that we have over here. OK? OK, under the assumption we use for our smoothing kernel, a Gaussian kernel, then we can actually show that this function k, so this was our function k, that this function k can be expressed using the error function, realizing a step from a to b using this error function. OK, so just to summarize this, if this is our original step function, this is our just kind of a drawing of a Gaussian. It doesn't look like a perfect Gaussian, but assume that this should be a Gaussian we actually obtain this smooth function by just convolving this function with this function. OK, so that's a pretty good thing we have now for something like, so it has something to do with smoothing, and we then need to detect these steps in my image. Now let's look what makes this step function a step function. So what kind of different steps do I get? And this gives me the distinction between an edge and a line. So an edge is something where, as we said before, where we go, for example, from a, from a dark intensity value to a bright intensity value and stay on that bright intensity level. So this is an edge. Or we are on a high intensity level and drop down to a low intensity value. This is also an edge. Something like this, I would more call a line. It's just kind of dark, and there's one small line in there. Of course, if you make our line thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker, we at some point in time end up in an edge. So it's not kind of a perfect distinction between edge and a line, and a line, but we are looking basically into detecting those lines. So if you have uh, into detecting edges, sorry, edges. If you have very small lines, we may need to, give, may need to discuss if we discuss this, uh, regard this as an edge or not. Just been basically the minimum width, so that we still call it an edge. Okay, so how can we do that? We want to exactly estimate these guys over here. I want to estimate this one, this one, and maybe this as one line. So this is kind of then not on every side. So the first thing we said, and this kind of image depicts the overview of what we are doing quite well. This is our perfect input, step function. This is something we want to detect in our image. In reality, however, the thing is kind of smoothed. So this is what you see here is the original G with our smoothing kernel. You can see here kind of our steps are smooth. If I want, now want to actually detect those guys over here, 
what I can do is I can compute the gradient again with through a convolution I can express this so this gives me gradients which look like this okay so the next thing I can do if I kind of want to detect them I can say okay let's simply square them and don't have to care about plus or minus and then I have kind of this the, the square of the first derivative so I have those peaks over here what I then can do is I basically can compute a thresholding over here or may even smooth them again and then simply say a threshold and say all values which are larger than a certain threshold should be considered the others should not be considered so I do this smoothing here this additional smoothing so that those two lines, so that this line is counted kind of as, as one element. So if I don't do this smoothing, a line will have on both sides an edge. And then I simply say, okay, I have this function, I cut away everything which lies below the threshold and simply then depict or estimate the maximas of this function. So this function separately from this, from this. Of course, they kind of cut it off here. So we get one, two, three returns. So these are those areas that our edge detection should actually highlight. So it's, it's kind of the overall idea clear on how we actually, what's our plan for realizing edge detection. So this is the original step function of the intensity values. What we have in our image is just a smooth version of that in our real, realistic image. We can say, okay, let's compute the first derivative. Actually, compute the first derivative, square that, smooth it again, do a thresholding, and then to estimate where the maxima of these functions are. And this should give us our edges in the image. So what I want to do now is go through those individual steps and show you how we can, with which tools we can use to actually realize this edge detection. Okay, so we start with the first step, which is kind of this procedure over here, and we should actually know quite well how we're actually doing this. So having our smoothing and computing our uh, gradient, because we can just apply the filters that we defined. So we basically, just remember what we have done last week and what we have did before in the uh, course on local operators. If I compute, I want to compute the first derivative with respect to x and first derivative with respect to y. So we're now interested in the first derivative. Then we can express this as a two-dimensional concept. So I can either say magnitude and the direction, or I can actually multiply this in there. So then gi is the absolute value of, so the magnitude of the gradient and its direction. I can express this by our d convolved with our input function g. And this d is, you may realize, recognizes again simply the sharp operator that we had before for computing the gradient. So what we do is we apply the sharp operator with respect to the x and the sharp operator with respect to the y direction. Okay? Is it clear so far what we are doing? So for computing, so what we now want to do, we we want to compute this step, or we do that in one shot. We have a smoothing involved because the sharp operator already does a smoothing and compute directly, dir directly go to our computing the first derivative. This is done in this way, which basically means we take those two kernels and convolve the input image G with this one to compute the first derivative with respect to X, or I in discrete case, or with respect to Y or J in the discrete case. Okay. So this is now just a three by three kernel. If we expect to have images which have a lot of noise, we may actually increase the kernel bits and in order to have more, a larger smoothing in there. So we may smooth those kernels not with this simple um, three, ten, three filter, what we did before or one to one which was for the um, Gaussian filter, we may take a larger kernel width. If you take a larger kernel width, simply this, this area gets larger. So it's not a three by three kernel, it's a larger kernel. So if you have very noisy elements, then we may increase this, or noisy images. 
So it simply depends on how much noise do we have in our image. So once we performed this convolution, we actually computed our first deriv derivative. So the first step is actually done. So now, next step was, step number two, compute the squared gradient. You can say, okay, simply do is take my gradient, times my gradient transpose. What I then do, I get this product over here. We have the gradient in x, the squared gradient in x in y, and in x times y. So we have now three elements per pixel. So from this one input image, for every pixel, we have kind of three outputs. And we have our squared gradient. And look into this function. Now I want to say we want to do this additional smoothing step that we have done. And, and do the thresholding. So kind of that's what we now want to do. So I have this smoothing and cut off everything which is smaller than this threshold. Again, say, OK. We have the smoothed variant of the squared gradient, which is a smoothing kernel times my squared gradient. And this is simply applying a smoothing to the individual elements of, my, of this matrix. So those gi square, gj square, and gi gj were exactly those values over here. And if I want to do this additional smoothing, it's just convolving all the three elements with the smoothing kernel. What I then can do is, if I have those elements, I can again compute the magnitude of that gradient by simply adding up those values over here. And I obtain that, for example, by computing the trace of H. And I can again move out the smoothing. So this gives me the magnitude. And this gives me from this matrix, which I can also see as a covariance matrix of the kernels, I, I kind of get my, the direction of this. So what I said now. Going here, what we've done, we have this smooth thing. And now the only thing we need to do with the thresholding, the thresholding we do on the, in, on the magnitude of, my, um, of the gradient. So actually based on this B. So just basically we check if B is larger or smaller than a certain threshold, I'm actually consider this as an edge. OK, so we have. So the, the, the magnitude of the pixel, as I said, only belongs on B. And I simply say, is this element either larger than a certain threshold? So I just have a fixed threshold for that. Or I look into the intensity values that I have in my local neighborhood. So if I say, OK, what is, how does my local neighborhood look like? I may adjust the threshold based on the local neighborhood. Just the question is if, if I can define such a threshold globally, or I don't want to define that globally. If I look into the local neighborhood, I say, OK, I simply look in one direction of the gradient. So this is kind of in the direction of the gradient into one direction or in the other direction if I'm kind of, if I found a local maximum. So I can actually illustrate this with a figure. So what we have in here is, so this is the direction of the gradient that we actually computed. And the magnitude that we have in here. What I do is I simply check this value, and so, and, no, sorry, this is the gradient, this is the direction of the gradient, and this is the potential edge that we have in here. So I, I take this point, and I move along this gradient in this direction, in this direction, and see how that changes. This is the squared one. So I compare this value and this value against this value over here. And I obtain those values. Of course, I only have those values actually at the, at the intersections, I have to obtain those values here via linear interpolation by just interpol interpolating between this value and this value over here. So I obtain this value and this value. And I simply make my thresholding check. So everything which is larger for which this, one, so for which this condition holds, we're basically done. So if you look to our image, what we actually get is one peak here, a second peak here, and a third peak here. Now what I need to do, I need to estimate the, 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 the maximum. So for every of those elements over here, I need to estimate the exact maximum. So where in this smooth function lies the exact maximum. 
So this maximum, as we have a kind of a, a discretized image, we only have those values here with the accuracy of one pixel, right? So we, the real edge may lie between two pixels. We can also try to do and say, okay, let's simply check if we cannot, if we can even estimate that with sub-pixel accuracy. Simply saying, looking into the individual values that I have in a certain area, can we actually do a sub-pixel estimation? And you can actually do that by making some assumptions about our function. So if these black dots over here are intensity values, I can assume a smooth function. I simply take those two values, which are maximum or the two largest values, and actually fit a parabola through those points. Of course, this is an assumption that I do, that this has a parabola shape here in this area. But if I do that, I can actually fit the parabola through those two points and then even obtain an, an estimation which is a sub, so which, where the location of the edge is, um, has a sub-pixel accuracy. So that we can, small, we can even say this edge lies between pixel A and pixel B, which are two neighboring pixels. Just by saying if these are the intensity values of two neighboring pixels, you can fit a small parabola in here and say, okay, the maximum of this function is actually here. And I was interested in finding this maximum. How does this look like in practice? So we're going back to this image that we have. If you just check our, the, the possible edges that we have through pixels, we actually would get this line over here. If we would have obtained a sub-pixel estimation, we say, okay, actually the maximum value lies between those two points over here, and I can fit a parabola through those two points and find the maximum of my function so it may lie here. So this would be the edge identified with sub-pixel accuracy. So this is the maximum function value that I have in here. Once I determine this, I know that this is my edge goes through in this direction here through my image. So once I have that, I just have, of course, computed this for those individual locations. If I want to kind of label now those pixels in my edge, I actually need to walk through the individual image and see which of those edges are actually connected with each other because I said I wanted to have that along the smooth line. So what I can do is I take my image and I simply select those pixels we say, okay, the, this is where the edge lies through or goes through. So here would be an edge on the left and an edge on the right-hand side. So this is, would be, for example, a line. The question is, how do I actually connect those elements over here? We can simply use this now. What we can use now in order to compute the line out of that is actually the skeleton computation that we use for binary image. So if I turn this into a skeleton, I actually get my line through my image if I compute the skeleton for those points which I labeled as potential edge points. So if I do that, I actually obtain exactly the results that we already had. So this was my the input image, sorry, input image. If I look into the smoothed, the edges obtained from the smooth gradient, this is kind of the output that I get. If I then compute my, um, detect my edges and lines through the thresholding operation, actually get this output image that I have over here. So what I basically depicted or illustrated so far, here's how we can actually perform such an edge detection. Again, just based on my local filtering, checking how, where we have the, our intensity values going from dark to bright and from bright to dark values. And that we can actually use Again, just the, the, this technology of using local filters together with some thresholding and sub-pixel estimation. The sub-pixel estimation is something we're going to do next week or as part of the, the lecture of next week, how we can actually do this in practice, um, end up with lines that we can extract from our image. Okay, so this was kind of just for wrapping up those local operators, how we can actually use this technology in order to build 
and edge detection. And at that point, I would like to make a probably 10 minute break to let some fresh air in, and then going to continue with image matching, which is a problem of given one part of an image and the whole image, how can we actually find a correspondence between these, for example, a template in an image or even between two images. Thank you.